Hello, welcome back. You joined me basically right after the last episode, about a couple of days later, and we're at the lower bonfire of Blight Town. I've just quickly run here. Um, first of all, by the way, I wanted to show off this. This is a big old shaft that runs... You, you can't really look straight up, but you can fall down it. There is, a, there is a top right at the very top, and at the bottom, near the bonfire, there's just like this weird, ominous-looking room. And at the bottom, there's this chest, which you imagine would be a mimic, right? You know, what else would it be? It's not. The chain's facing away. If the chain's facing at you, it's a mimic. Instead, inside... Got dragon scale. Now, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> and not, not, not the foggiest idea why there's a dragon scale in there. I'm, I'm sure there is some explicit lore reason to it, but I wanted to just show it off quickly in case people were wondering if, you know, there was something back there. Anyway... What I want to show off is indeed the what I think is a very, very, very good way to farm lots and lots of large titanite shards very fast. And the route involves running from the bonfire, coming all the way to uh, uh, flatland, and what we're looking for is leeches that should come up into the water very soon. I think you can see some back there. So I'm going to quickly deal with these uh, Blighttown men. There might be a couple more flying our way, I'm not entirely sure. No, I think we should be safe for the now-ish. Anyway, there's these leeches in Blight Town that are, like, everywhere. And at first, you know, when you first see them, you think, oh, they're, they're disgusting. Look at these little wigglers. And, in fact, they're, like, the best source in the game. Um, at least until way later that you can get large Titanite shards. They tend to drop pretty regularly. So hopefully we're going to get a couple here. If we can get our, um, our scythe up to a plus ten will basically be solid for like a very, very, very long time. Um, I don't know if I intend to farm until I get plus 10. I think you need like a lot of shards for that and maybe a chunk or two. But we're going to, you know, we're doing a couple of routes. I'll do a couple of routes. I'll cut out most of it. But I'll show off some of the loot that I get, I reckon. Here we go. This is this is a particularly good spot. There's normally a fair few around here. There we go. You have to get used to taking a shitload of damage from the swamp as well. It's just something that's going to happen. Like you, you will bleed. There's, I don't really think it's worth it using a moss clump either because it does such little damage. The poison that is. I would like it if they would stop trying to kill me though. Thank you. Ooh. They're quite slow with the attack as well. So I mean, pretty much any weapon you can deal with these. They're quite, quite easy, simple enemies once you learn what they're doing. I would appreciate it if they drop their loot though. They're, sometimes you have to wiggle the body around. It gets caught in there sometimes. You have to look around for the glue. This is also the ascent of uh, Blight Town. If you're curious, Blight Town is actually... There you go, you can see it there. That's the naked sky. There is no roof to Blight Town. This is a bridge. This big old dark section is right under a bridge. So, despite what you may or may not think, it's not like some cavern underground. It's actually just like a regular town. There's the forest over there. Somewhere up there is uh, Firelink Shrine. I think this is the wall of Firelink Shrine right here. And there's another thing. Is it? It might be this tree. But there's a huge... I think it is this one. There's a massive tree, which you can see all the way from Filing Shrine. And that's actually the main reason I wanted to go here. Not the, the farming, really. Because, I mean, so far we've been a bit unlucky. Because inside that tree... I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom of the tree. But I am going to show off a super secret area, which, if you didn't know about, you're going to be shocked. You know, it's top ten reasons that you can stun and shock your significant other. Funky things with a grapefruit or something. Anyway, it's it's a really cool secret area, and if you haven't seen it, it will be awesome. And I basically just want to quickly nip down it, pick up a very, very specific ring, which will be incredibly helpful for the entire game. Because right now I'm running the Witch's Ring, which is useless. Like, I've done I've done its use. I've talked to the, the Spider Lady. That's all it's used for in the entire game. Please don't kill me. Just use your, use your wiggly attack, thank you. Oh god. <laughs> They're quite hard to aim at, I have to be honest. Just because they've got like a very thin hitbox and they're quite they're quite squirmy, and it's are they really not dropping any shards today? They normally drop them like uh, you know like birds being shot at. And they just drop out of the sky with these old uh, large shards. It's very very weird. Normally you'll get like three or four when you come through here. Yeah? I'd say you end up coming across like fifteen of these these things. And I find it very unlikely that they've just suddenly patched the game in the last two days and removed this section. Ooh. Yeah, you, you wiggled at me. Final go. Not one shard. Well, that's a little bit rubbish. Here's the server, by the way. 
despite what it uh, looks like, it's not actually anything to do with the internet. Why am I so slow? It's actually a big old curved sword, and there's a really cool fact about it, if I bring it up. Ooh, it's description. Imbued with frightful occult energy that restores HP with every uh, hit, and it's a curved greatsword, despite what it might look like. It looks a bit like a paper fan, I've always thought. And it does... Does it do occult damage? It doesn't do occult damage, despite what it says. However, you see what it looks like. Really cool, like, great sword. If you imbue this sword with fire, its description changes. Slightly. It just changes from frightful occult energy to, like, frightful fiery energy or something. Which I always thought was quite cool. Completely useless information. Like, it doesn't help at all. It doesn't change much about the weapon other than the fact it does fire damage. But I thought I'd point it out. Just a little bit of trivia. We like our trivia. Oh, I find it quite weird that we didn't find any shards there, though. I don't know how many times I've done this route across various runs, but I don't think I've ever done a route where I've just found literally nothing. I think that's it. We're gonna have to... I'm gonna pop into this tree, then. And do I have any homeward bones? I hope I do. I'm an idiot. Why did I run all the way back from Quailax? I could have used a homeward bone. Wasn't the smartest idea. <laughs> homeward bones, of course. They teleport you back to the last bonfire you rested at. Um, oh, that'll probably be why, because I rested at the bonfire in the uh, in the domain. So it would have been kind of useless for scaling back up. Hello. Are you going to drop me a shard? Oh, there we go. That was apparently a 1 in 15, 1 in 20 chance. It's not. It's like a 1 in 8 or something. It's not that, un not that uncommon. I don't know why we haven't found any. Are you going to drop one as well? <sighs> oh, well. We've, we've found enough. We can probably put it like a level or two. Anyway, here's the ancient tree, or whatever it's called. Big old, big old trio. You can't really look up enough, but just look at the size of this thing. Very large. Anyway, if you were just on a normal run, you'd pop in here, you'd be like, oh, look. A plank shield. Basically a useless tree. Why did I come in here? It's a huge waste of time. Wait. There's no secret wall. It must be a completely loose, useless zone. Oh, no, wait, there is a secret wall. That'll be why there's a secret thing in here, although there will be something great in this chest, won't there? Right? Yeah? We find... Uh, we found a twin humanities. Oh, I mean... You'd think, at this point, that's probably good enough. Twin twin humanities. That's, that's probably what I'm looking for. And you'd head off. However, there is something very special in this room. So if you just would, if you were just to immediately leave, you'd probably miss out on the best section, one of the best sections of the game. And I'm not going to show it off yet because I don't have the ability to teleport, and it would be hell to get back. But if you were to go past all of this stuff, you know, you'd think, oh, dead body, and then a chest. That's it, right? Oh no, there's a second secret door. Ooh, what could possibly be down this secret door that's cooler? It's called the Great Hollow. Could be a giant zombie, or alternatively a giant tree. It's up to you, up to your own thoughts. But he just kind of keeps going. I'll just drop down. I think you take much damage. No. And all of a sudden, I'm not going to sleep here, by the way. But I'm. I think I can light it. That's no problem. Inside this big old tree is a super, super secret tree level that goes down incredibly far, all the way down to the bottom of the earth. It's actually at the bottom of the tree is the lowest part of the map, if I remember correctly. Um, and anyway, inside this tree, there's crap loads of those little beetles that you kill, and you get titanite shards. I think they're just called, like, titanite beetles or something, I don't remember. Honestly, do not remember. And I don't think there's any secret, further secret zones in here, to my knowledge. But um, what I want is, I think it's that... I don't remember if it's that or not, if it's one down. Um, ooh, it's dangerous. I might... You know what, I think I will sleep at this bonfire. I think that's the smart idea. I think sleeping here is a smart idea, because if I die, then I'll have to run all the way back here, and I don't want to do that. But I'm willing to run all the way back to the fire, I'd say. Anyway, pop one into decks, as always. You can actually hear the sparkling. And I want to just drop into the top of this thing here, but there's a really specific zone that you have to land on. Is it this? Let's find out. Oh! There goes, like, all of my health. <laughs> if I hadn't put um, vitality up at all, I don't think you can actually get this this item. There we go. Chloranth uh, the Chloranthi ring. That's all I wanted. Something just burped down there. Anyway, let's replace... I stuck a wolf ring on, but let's replace that with the Chloranthi ring, which stacks with our shield, so now we've got super duper fast stamina regen. If I just, like, whack the sword over here for a second... Watch how fast it regens. Super fast. It's ridiculous. 
uh, means that you can run these like really heavy dual weapon loadouts for like the entire game without having to level up endurance too much. Just look at that. It's very, very, very stupid. Uh, one issue with this area, by the way, is that like there's a lot of weird little ledges which are a bit screwy. I might pick up a bit of loot. I can always just use a bone to go back up to the top. Yeah, just like, look at this. Like, I can clearly go up here, but there was like an invisible wall stopping me. That chunk's pretty useful, though. I'm just just do a little bit of a scaling. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom, but I will try and pick up maybe one or two bits. Excuse me. Oh, God. This area always terrifies me. Like, I, th I don't know, I can't remember how many times that I've just f suddenly fallen. And then goes all, there goes all your health. And I don't think I've ever actually bothered picking up all of the loot here. It's, like, way too difficult to get all of it. But I will have a little pop. Have a see. That's not even the bottom, that's like... That's like a fifth of the way down, that, like, floor that suddenly appears. I don't know how that floor formed, to be honest, but it's there. I'm just hoping there'll be a couple more, like, titanite shit. Yeah, there we go. It's mostly, like, coloured chunks, so if you have, like... A special elemental weapon, you can use that to level it up. I don't really intend on running any of those. What are you? Can I pick you up? Oh, a red chunk? Oh, here we go. The curse of anyone who's played this game and has no idea what they are. Um, these are basilisks. We saw them back in the... What do you... Not the sewers, what are they called? The depths. And they'll curse us. And I have, like, no curse resistance. So basically I have to ignore his, like, vapor cloud that he's spitting out there. Luckily, I can just slice his face off. And another cool little fact, I don't know if you can really see, but those look like giant eyeballs, don't they? They're actually not. Those aren't Those aren't the eyes. I can't remember if I showed this off. But if they're, I'm going to have to pull out the binoculars. Do I have the binoculars equipped? No. I'll equip the binoculars quickly and show this off, because I think it's kind of funny. This is, this is really hard to do. I can't remember having this much difficulty in the past, trying to zoom in on his little face. He just keeps wiggling around. I can kind of see it. Look, there's... If you look right there, you'll see a tiny, tiny, tiny little eye just above its, uh, like, throat thing. Those are its actual eyes. These things on the top of its head are not real. They're just there to scare you. Which I always thought was kind of funny. Anyway. I think that's just about all I wanted to pick up. I don't really want to go down any further, because if I ever get cursed, that would be awful. I'll try and pick you up, there. Blue Titanite chunk. Oh, I think it's a trap. Let's, let's just hover back up. Oh, another shard. Oh, they dropped green shards as well. I forgot about that. Oh, and another one. And yet another one. You see, this is this is the kind of luck that you normally get. You normally find, like, three or four a run. If for some reason the first run I was trying to show it off, I found literally one out of, like, all the 20 things that I killed. But it's good to know. It's good to keep in mind if you're looking to level up your weapon, especially before you go to the next area. I'd highly recommend having at least, like, a plus... Something over a plus five. If you can get a plus ten, that'd be great. But it's not really necessary. Like, plus seven or eight is probably good enough. Oh, I forgot. I've actually got the, re the like, reinforce at fi uh, bonfire thing. So I can actually... Quickly pump, pump a couple of things into these scythe. Uh, we need two more shards. You know, I think I'm, I'm going to do another quick run to go and grab two more shards, because having a plus ten would just be such a great health. Oh, there we go. Just need one more now. Ah, the final one. I guess while I'm at it, I might finish the run. Like, I haven't put any reinforcements into any of my armour, and I'm probably going to be running either this set or another really specific one for the entire game. So it might be worth it to put a couple of shards into some of those some of those clothes. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Just two bodies with, uh, with with shards right next to them. Great. It's lovely that, like, the luck in this game. You, you don't find the loot when you need it, and then the one run you decide that you're doing a strength build, you find, like, the really, really good dex weapons and that kind of thing. Always seems to happen. So, like, a nice little side of that run is that it's right next to this bonfire, which I'll always kindle for the boss. So it's just, like, an extra little reason to kindle this bonfire, because then you can do the run and use Estus as much as you like without having to think about it. But anyway, we did pick up quite a bit of experience there, um, which I'll probably just shove into decks. And we can finally reinforce up to plus ten. The scythe. thing would do so much damage now. And I wonder if I can put anything into the armor I've got, or if I need shards. I have no shards. That's alright. Now is the time, I guess, for me to do a quick run up to Phylunk Shrine, and I'll meet you there. Ah, oh, gotta love that, like, coming out of the depths Phylunk Shrine music when it just, like, appears. Oh, shit. He's done it. He's actually done it. So, um, remember the old gold man that was sitting here and yelling gold every time someone subscribed? No. He's, um... Oh, well, yeah, let's, let's pick this up first. 
Some pretty, pretty, pretty dingy shit in there. In a black eye orb. It just says dead. If you were. There's also no body, which I've always thought was quite weird. But um, so it seems like our friend, he um, it seems like he killed our firekeeper, which as um, not only is that like just bad because they were, you know. They were like the person who was leveling up Aister's flask resin and all that. It also means that the bonfire doesn't work. Um, which means that you can't use the filing shrine bonfire. Oh no, what are we going to do? Well, it involves coming back much, much, much later in the game. And using this black eye orb. Which you can use to invade the murderer, which was that bloke, obviously. And you can defeat him and then get the soul back. And it says at the bottom, it keeps constant watch on Anor Londo. I wonder... What on earth Anor Londo could be? Don't actually... No, you can't really see. Okay. Regardless, let's have a little chat with this dude. Did you, did you see any issues? Any any funny, any monkey business? Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now, we have a new problem. It's noisy. It snores. And its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Wonderful lip syncing there, my dude. So what is this? Damn. That stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. Oh, maybe it's time I do something about it. Oh dear. You feeling alright, my dude? Oh, maybe it's time. Okay, so apparently... The second bell he was like, Oh wow, no one's ever done that, really. Well, people, let me... He hasn't... You know, he didn't think we were going to be able to do it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But apparently there's something noisy and smelly and stenchious and... I don't know what that would be. I don't know why my camera's back to front either. We're going to have to find out in perhaps... A second... Oh, no! <laughs> it's... It's the... Uh, bloody moustache man. What's up? Yes, he does look a little bit like a muscular penis. I think I think everyone's noticed that. And yes, the penis does have a moustache and big old teeth. And yes, he does make little like funky sounds, which I'm not going to imitate. Hello, what's up, Framps? Ah, hello. Was it you who rang the bell of a witch? Yes, his voice does not match him at all. The primordial serpent, King Seeker Frank. Close friend of the great Lord Gwyn. Ooh, you're friends with Gwyn, are you? I have a... Yes, I did that. I wish to elucidate your fate. He's the man who does all the artwork for Northern Lions thumbnails, I believe. No, he doesn't. Wait, no. Eluce. Eluc. He does. He runs the, like, Platinum God Isaac wiki. I'm thinking of Dracula Fetus. What, what do you want? No, fuck off. By the Lords. Well, there can be only one, but then again... I will stay here. So basically, I just told him to fuck off. Um, I don't know how much I want to talk about, basically. So a lot of this game, like, some people seem trustworthy. Like, our best friend. He's the most trustworthy person in the game. We love him. And then some people are just, they just, they just pop out of the ground in a very, very funny manner. And they're like, oh, hello, I'm best friends with God. Um, and you're great. So... Um, go do what I say. And so, you know, you'd just be like, yeah, alright then, Framped, yeah, I'll just do what you say. Um, I don't know, do I want to do off? Eh. I don't really like him. I think mean, he's a bit weird. But he's kind of useful. You know what I might do? I'm going to say, yeah. I'll do it just for you. Chosen undead. Your fate is to succeed. Doesn't make you a bit uncomfortable, doesn't it? He's got his, like, big old square on his head. you may link the fire, cast away the dark. Undo the curse of the undead. Ooh. This end, you must visit Anor we have to go to Anor Londo. Oh, sorry, did I, did I did I ignore you? Oh, he looks all sad now. I'm sorry, I'll listen to what you've got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, wa he wants us to get the Lord Vessel. So this is like the first bit of actual dialogue since the start of the game that tells us what to do. And he basically just tells us, go to this place now. Is it something urgent? Oh, also, um, the reason I wanted to keep him is because you can feed him, sh like, shards. And kind of like in tier Team Fortress 2, where if you have metal, you can smelt it down to lower metals, like you have one refined, and you can turn it into three reclaimed. He'll do that here, but with these shards. So say we didn't want this chunk, I could break that up into X number of um, large shards. I don't remember how many. And he'll do the same with most of this stuff that can be broken down. And it's pretty useful. So if you need, like, a bunch of little little shards for the rest... Wait... 
What happens if I feed you green? I forget. Is it useful? Yeah, so you can you can basically farm like a crap load of regular Titanite Chars by feeding him those green ones. Remember they were dropping in like groups of five. So I'm just gonna give him I'm gonna give him five. Also he's the shop, so if you want you can sell him useless stuff. I got 30, 30 Titanite Chars from those five greens. So an excellent way to like level up bits of clothing and stuff is to just go feed him a shitload of green shards, which you can farm very easily in very big numbers. That was basically one drop. I gave him one drop's worth of green shards, and he, he fed us the shit out of it. Anyway, we can't use that bonfire. He's told us his bit. I have nothing to sell to him, so I'm going to run to the next useful bonfire, and I'll meet you there. Oh, I guess while I'm at it, I'll also show off this little NPC over here. If I remember the jump button. Yeah, it's that. I might not make this, and I'll feel a bit silly if I don't. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> I made it. Wonderful. So this is the bloke that we met in the depths. I don't know what he's doing down here in such a weird little spot. He's right next to a ring. It's like the Ring of Sacrifice or something. It's a thing that when you when you die, you keep all your souls. Yeah, it's Ring of Sacrifice. Anyway, hello. What's up? Hi, Shimon. I didn't expect to meet anybody here. I suppose great minds think alike, eh? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, he doesn't really say much. He sells you... Well, the bottomless box and the master key. If you don't have the master key, you have to come here. So once you clear the depths, come here and you can buy the master key and then do whatever you want. And he sells crystal shit and normal Anyway, you can buy boss armor off him. Now, we haven't beaten any bosses yet that, like, have armor. They've mostly just been, like, I don't know, like, creatures. But you can buy his shit. And then once later in the game, you kill more humanoid bosses, he'll sell their armor, which is really cool. So, yeah. And, actually, no, I think we bought all of his... Lightning stuff. Anyway, let's head back. See if I can make the jump first. Ooh. Oh, I've, I've missed that so many times. It's always very embarrassing. Anyway, off to off to the next fire. After seeing the length of the video after uh, editing, I've decided I'm actually going to split it up into a 20 minute and a 40 minute video, which will come out tomorrow. I apologise, but it will take far, far too long to render and upload at the current length, so I'm going to split it here, and we'll be seeing you next time at Sen's Fortress. I hope you did enjoy it, though, and I'll see you all um, tomorrow. Goodbye.